All right, I'm getting ready to swap out a 24,000 RPM spindle in one of my little high-speed mills with a similar speed and power spindle with a quick change uh, spindle nose. And there are a couple of things I'm not sure about, but I'll tell you what I know. Uses a little ISO 20 tool holder. I've got some of these in ER, with ER16 noses and ER20 noses. One of the things I noticed right away is there's no eccentric ring. That's what ER stands for, is eccentric ring, to lock the collet into the nut. And at first I thought that was going to be a problem, but then I realized that the wrench that slides into this little nut will go into the ring in the collet and pull it out when you're removing it to remove a tool. One other thing I was a little annoyed at is I ordered some, uh, some a bunch of extra collets for this job, and w among those were three sixteenths, and that's a four or five millimeter, and it's a little loose, so. I found that a little bit annoying. I hate it when they do that. Oh, it's close enough. No, if I'd have wanted a 4.5 millimeter, I'd have ordered a 4.5 millimeter. And actually, when I order metrics, I prefer to order them the exact size, not a, to kind of be close. All right. Anyway, that's in there. It's good. When we're all done, I'll show you that it comes out too and pops the tool, the collet out. It's pretty simple. Spindle nose here, air seal, uh, air blast when you're to clear the chips out. I've got a lot of this figured out. I don't know if you can see everything on the back of this spindle, but uh, I'll tell you about it, and if I need to, I'll snap a picture and cut it into the video at some point. Right here is your three-phase power. These three wires right here doesn't really matter which one's which. If it runs backward, you just swap any two wires. I know that much. I'm assuming these two are a, these two little guys right here are a um, thermal protect of some kind. You can hook them up to a warning. I'll probably hook them up to a little flasher or a little sounder, you know, through a relay. The ground is obvious. Uh, I've got two sets of wires here that come out of the same plug and it's labeled transducer and I don't know what that means and each one of these little cables has three individual conductors in it one is labeled HK and one is labeled UK and I don't know what these are for the uh, water inlets are obvious you just pump water into the spindle and it goes back out to a large holding tank and you just continuously pump water through the spindle while you're running it so that it doesn't overheat. My other spindles are the same way. Um, a lot of you guys are probably familiar with stuff like that already. The center air inlet here, all four of these are, are quick connect airline connectors. The center one is the air inlet for the tool change. It's pretty straightforward. You just put air in, in here and, it, and uh, a, a pneumatic mechanism pushes a drawbar down which opens a claw inside the spindle nose and then you put the tool in it and release the air the claw closes and the drawbar pulls the tool into the taper of the spindle nose never mind the bouncing camera I'm just checking that we're still recording and that we're on camera All right. See, it doesn't go in, it's closed up. Hit it with some air, it releases, release the air, it grabs it and pulls it into the spindle. It's locked in there. Alright. Hit it with some air, pushes it out, you can remove it, remove the air, it goes away. Now let's talk about some of those other air fittings on the back of this spindle. air seal right here that's obvious that's uh, pre lightly pressurizes the uh, nose of the spindle and has a constant stream of air pushing out uh, through the um, 
I hate to call it a labyrinth because I don't know if it's actually a labyrinth or not, but basically pushing out through the gap between the turning part of the spindle nose and the non-turning part of the spindle nose to keep any coolant or chips from getting up inside of it. Works just fine. I put a little air on it. So let's turn it back around. Make sure I got the right one. Air seal. Then you just get a continuous low volume of air blasting out around the uh, tool and keeping any coolant or chips from getting inside the spindle. Pretty straightforward. There's one more air fitting here that I'm pretty sure I know what it is. It's a D-duster. It says D-duster right here on this one. Again, I don't know if you can see that, but I'll snap a picture and cut it in the video at some point. And when you put air in that, it blasts air out through the spindle, internal part of the spindle itself. I'm assuming that's to blast out any chips or coolant or debris that may have gotten in here during the course of making a tool change. Uh, maybe even if you're doing, if you set it up with a fully automated tool change with a carousel or a wine rack or something like that, it might blow off the tool also that you're getting ready to load. So I could see the use for that. Then there's one more air fitting on the back of this that I haven't got a clue what it does because it doesn't make any sense. It says air outlet. All right. Now on another video I watched, a guy seemed to think that the air outlet had something to do with the uh, tool locking mechanism because on his machine he hit the hit it with air, you know, dropped the tool out, put another tool in and then let the air off and it took a while before it locked up properly. Well, I think his problem wasn't that it needed a secondary mechanism to to retract the the drawbar. I'm pretty sure that's just done with some heavy springs. I think what the problem was is that he had a valve, just basically a simple one-way valve or not one-way valve, but open closed valve and he would hit it with air, swap the tool release his valve and it would take about 10 seconds or so for the air trapped between his valve and the mechanism to let off enough uh, so that his tool was locked in and his spindle would spin pr freely um, because when I do it when I actually let off the air I'll use a th probably use a three-way solenoid valve when I actually let off the air here let's hit the air Put it in, let off the air, it's locked in, spin freely, it's exactly like it's supposed to be. So that other explanation didn't make any sense to me at all. So I really don't know what the air outlet does. Other than make me drop the camera. Oh, we're still recording, I didn't break the camera. That's good. I don't really know what the air outlet is for. You know, logically, you don't put air into an air outlet. I don't know really what the air outlet is for. Logically, you don't put air into an air outlet. But just trying to figure out if it did anything, I went ahead and put some air into it. I don't hear anything there. Uh, let's put some air into the air seal. No air comes out if I do that. Put air into the de-duster. No air comes out of that air outlet from any normal thing that I can figure out. So I don't know what it's for. Maybe you guys can help me out. Oh, yeah, there's one more thing I almost forgot. Uh, let's re I was going to show you that even though that nut doesn't have an eccentric ring, it, it's not a problem as long as you use the correct wrenches. Let's move the spindle aside. There it is. As you can see, there's little grooves here that the spindle nut wrench engages into. Okay. 
And uh, at first I was like freaking out because these uh, collet closers, you can hear the little pop as it pops it out, because these collet closer nuts didn't have an eccentric ring in them. But as you can see, the wrench that you use with it serves the same purpose.